What's up, guys? John Claymore here. Now, the security footage from the Marriott Hotel has been released. It's been released in the deposition, and I do have some of that footage for you guys. Now, guys, before we go any further, I'm going to be reasserting that I do believe that Michael Irvin should, in fact, sue the NFL, not just the NFL, but obviously the Marriott, too. We'll be talking a little bit about this story here in a second to kind of catch you guys up on things. But the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to look at the security footage, the actual footage itself from the deposition. We're going to come back, give some additional commentary. I'm going to play the footage a second time while I'm giving commentary. I'm going to reassert why it is that Michael Irvin should, in fact, sue the NFL. And then after that, I'm going to come back and uh, show you what Michael Irvin had to say about this and why it is that he probably feels the way he does. Let's go ahead and roll this. Pause one second. But we've been going for a while. We're having a lot of conversation. As, as Marriott released in their statement, they said basically, he said one word to her, an offensive, vulgar thing that he did not say. It's clear from the video and from these witnesses. But they have a very lengthy conversation, and no one's trying to tell us what that is. Go ahead. walked in closer to her, she didn't back up at all. Got her shaking hands. Now, I want you to watch the end interaction here. So she's gonna kind of, when people come up, she'll kick her leg. When she walks off, she's still talking to Michael and she'll be all friendly. Here you go. Kicks her leg. And see right here, she's gonna look back over her shoulder and say, oh, Michael, not bother. Bother. Okay. They claim he was leering at her. When he looks back at the bar, she's way gone. Because you're about to watch, she's going to go over here, and that guy is going to go very, he's going to get very visibly upset with her. And basically, there's somebody who's, I don't want to use the word abusive, but there's somebody who's really being forward to her, and it's this gentleman here. It wasn't like her. So watch what happens. Okay, go ahead and roll the tape. You see him grab her, and she falls not pausing. Now Michael's looking over there for the first time. He's not watching her. He's talking to these guys. You'll see in a second, they turn around and they start talking to him. The guy in the white hat. Okay, go ahead. See? Now Michael walks out. He's gonna take a selfie with this, we believe Brandon Muslim boy, 99% sure. <coughs> and the security guy stays right there with him. He's been around for the whole conversation, really. This right here looks like a situation where a man was just good old-fashioned talking to a woman, and of course this woman walked away and thought to herself, you know what, I think I'm going to sue Mr. Irvin for all he has. I think that's what I'm going to do, but first let me go ahead and put in a complaint to the management at the Marriott. Now guys, I'm not going to get into the whole Me Too thing because I think the whole Me Too thing was exactly what we found out to be, mostly a bunch of crap. Of course there were some situations where women did in fact get harassed, but I've also said on multiple occasions if something happens to you, if you are touched in any bad way, obviously we can't use certain trigger words on this platform, you need to come forward right away. Because hence the fact if you come out later on, then guess what? Nobody's probably going to believe you. Now, I said in the previous video that I felt that Michael Irvin should, in fact, be vindicated from this. And obviously this video looks like it has vindicated him. Oh, wait a second. There is one thing that I do need to kind of make an addendum to. It's the topic of Emmett Till. Michael Irvin says he feels like Emmett Till. I got something wrong in that last video. I got the stories mixed up. My bad. I told you guys that I thought that Emmett Till was um, a young man who had actually been accused of raping a white girl when that was actually not the case and he had got lynched. No, no, no. He was a 14-year-old kid who had just whistled at a white woman and next thing you know, I'm pretty sure you guys can kind of put two and two together. Don't worry, I'll leave a link to that story in the description box. Fact of the matter is this right here. I'm playing you guys the footage again, so that way you guys can kind of see that it looks like just good old-fashioned having a conversation with somebody and talking to a couple of fans, and he just simply walks off. There were witnesses, by the way, that did confirm that Mike did not do anything, and I think that he needs to sue the NFL, not just the Marriott Marquis, because the fact of the matter is this right here. They did not get his back on this right now. We'll be playing Mike's reaction, what he said after the deposition here in a second. And you guys can kind of see exactly where he's going at with this. Now, 
Let me say this one more time. When your employer, and I know I'm kind of breathing a little bit heavy here, sciences are kind of bothering, so maybe not making a video tomorrow might actually help. We've got pollen and whatnot going on where I live at, and obviously my science has been a little bit jacked up all day. But the thing is this, so, so, so please bear with me. The thing is this right here. When your employer basically calls you into the office or they show up to where you're at and they basically tell you to pack your bags and go home and they basically put you in a position where you think you're going to be fired and they give you no explanation at all, regardless of how much money you are getting paid, this is obviously an extremely lonely feeling. Now, it's not just a lonely feeling that actually should bother you here. It's the mere fact that they didn't even bother to listen to his side of the story. The NFL and NFL Network were willing to take the words of somebody before actually doing an honest to God investigation. So I think that Mike should definitely pursue legal action against both the Marriott, maybe even against this woman. But the problem is that this woman does not have any money or anything, but definitely get her fired, keep her from actually working a job in the hotel industry again. Definitely not inside of a big city where she might could be around anybody who she could try to leech money off of, a la former NFL football players. But the thing is this right here. She basically me too'd him in the NFL and the NFL Network, they, for the most part, did not even bother doing an investigation. That sucks, and it sucks a lot. Mike should definitely pursue legal action. But then again, though, Mike obviously feels quite vindicated. Let's go ahead and roll this. I get texts all day from the guys that I work with, and, and I do miss working and everything. But this is, this is more about, this is more than just work. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm in between big businesses here, businesses that, make billions of dollars with and for each other. But when you get called in a room and you're sick, you, somebody tells you, hey, pack your bags, you leave the duty, go home. And I said, what, what happened? Well, you said you were assaulted, so I said, who, me, what, and then nobody was in my room. Well, don't worry about it, go home. We'll talk about it. I said, what, wait, I, I, you're, you're, if you're telling me I'm doing something and I do not know what I'm doing, you can't tell me to just go home. I played this game hard. I played the game physical. And you guys know we all worry about it. We see what happens with our brothers, and we now know about CTE. I'm saying, how can you say I'm doing something and I don't know it, and you tell me to go home? I couldn't go home. Steve, you know, they put me in a hotel, a little Marriott, and they watched me. I'm in the staff for three days three days to make sure that I wasn't doing anything crazy. Make sure that I was okay, you know? And you guys know I always fought to get this tape. While I was sitting there and they were looking at me, we kept asking for the tape, let us see. Let us see what we're doing. Let us see if we're doing something. You saw how hard we fought legally. I'm just, you know, I'm just thankful. I'm just so thankful for those witnesses. I'm so thankful for this video, for this video. Because without it, I, 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 I just don't know where this would, would have gone. Obviously, it has been an emotional past few weeks from like, I think it's been actually an emotional past six or seven weeks. I want to say this where it occurred right around the time of the AFC Championship game. Fact of the matter is that uh, when you've basically been accused of something and nobody is even bothering to listen to you, and this is one of the main reasons why I hate the whole Me Too thing, because we're automatically taking the words of somebody without actually doing an honest to God investigation. You gotta understand something right quick. When you are a man and you have been accused of something, regardless of what it is, when you have been accused by somebody and there's no investigation, you're automatically kind of sort of hung in the media. That is the issue here. Once the media gets a hold of you, it completely ruins your reputation. Now, hopefully, the NFL network will kind of get past this and be able to say, look, Mike, we're sorry about this. Here's a bunch of back pay. Next time, dude, we'll talk to you. We'll actually get an investigation going. We'll actually go through with everything. and We'll actually get through the motions of actually helping you out rather than just going ahead and jumping to conclusions. The NFL, on the other hand, I think the NFL's deal is that they're scared that whatever little success that they're getting back after the 2016-17 SJW initiative crap that they pulled, even in 2020, I think that what's going on with the NFL is that they're scared in some way that they may get another black eye. The fact of the matter is the NFL has had more black eyes outside of just the SJW stuff. I mean, at one point in time, it wasn't just the flag kneeling. It was also the concussions, okay? Then it was also abuse. If you guys remember Ray Rice, there was that whole entire ordeal there. That's a whole completely big type of can of worms that I may explain in a project at a later date when I start doing stories and stuff on the platform, which may be a second channel. But the thing is, is right here, 
the NFL has been dealing with a lot of things. And one of the things the NFL has done is they found ways to maneuver in and out of it. Now, of course, this was a situation where they probably looked at one of their analysts and said, one of their former players, NFL Hall of Famer, by the way, and said, wait a minute, he's been accused by a lady. He's been accused by a woman. So, uh, yeah, 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 we need to go ahead and take her aside. We need to go ahead and have him suspended. You know, go ahead and let the Marriott Marquette, who, by the way, works with us as a sponsor, we need to go ahead and kind of give them their due and just kind of shut Mike the hell out. His opinion does not matter. That's not how the real world works, dude. You need to at least give said individual who's being accused, you need to at least give them the opportunity to defend and refute the claims, at least be able to face the accuser. Mike was never even allowed to do that up until now. And of course, he saw the video and obviously he felt vindicated. Now, gang, let me go a little bit further on this right here. Uh, the thing you have to understand about accusers is this here. They typically tend to be having some form of end game. Now, this case right here looks to me like a woman who saw somebody famous and then just said, you know what, I could probably get some money out of him, but I need to go ahead and file the complaint. I know I just kind of said this a while ago, but the thing is this right here. A lot of accusers who make accusations based upon one simple interaction where nothing has been really and truly exchanged, they do this in the hopes that they can get some kind of money. This is not like the situation with Kobe Bryant back, I think, in 2001, where he had actually sexually assaulted a woman. Then again, though, at the same time, other evidence that came by. Either way, that doesn't matter. This is not the same situation. This is a situation where an NFL football player is inside of a hotel having interactions with fans. He's just chilling out for the most part. Meets somebody, shakes hands, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you, this, that, and the other. Two parties walk off, and then the party that walked off comes back the next day and says, this guy right here accused me. I mean, excuse me, this guy over here sexually harassed me. The NFL needs to desperately take a look back and kind of sit back and kind of think on things. And they need to kind of say to themselves, what are we doing wrong when it comes to former players? You're talking about concussions. He talked about CTE. He talked about all this stuff, which, by the way, the NFL has been, how do I say this, they've been kind of hit for in the past. Ray Rice, what else is it? CTE, all the concussions. Of course, Antonio Brown's behavior. Of course, now we have the... Now we believe the game is fully rigged. I could have told you that shit years ago. But the thing is this right here. It seems like there's another black eye every day for the NFL. It's what it feels like. And let's be honest, the NFL is kind of a punching bag for the mainstream media. It may be possible that Goodell and these guys may have gotten a hold of this and said, for God's sakes, whatever you do, do not allow the mainstream media to get a hold of this footage. It is possible that that right there may have been the case. Either way, though, that being said, you might want to talk to one of your alum and talk to one of your uh, one of your actual employees first. Then you got Michael Irvin works for the NFL Network, which, by the way, still falls under the NFL, is contract with the NFL. Maybe you should actually speak to him first, so that way he can already know that you've got his back. But you guys obviously chose not to get his back. So yes, I do have uh, I, I do understand Michael Irvin's sentiment here. And the good news is that he had people he worked with texting him to see if he was doing okay. People who actually knew him. This right here is what matters. The people who actually make up an organization, that is actually what matters. Sometimes the corporate entity uh, gets things wrong, and of course they get things wrong because they don't actually ask any questions. They're too self-conscious of what might be said about them in the media, so they go ahead and shut down the story right away. This right here, of course, being the NFL with the Marriott Marquis, and they did not want this story to obviously get any bigger than what it already had. So, uh, yeah, the NFL definitely needs to change their protocol when it comes to investigating incidents like this. Guys, John Claymore here. I just figured I'd throw a quick video out there. This video right here has been kind of a struggle. I've been trying to do it for the past two hours. My throat and everything has been bothering me, mostly due to my sinuses. You can probably hear it in my voice. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section, and I'll see you soon.